This episode of Today in Engineering was sponsored by Zently, a free app for making the process of renting a place much easier, plus one person will be entered to win a month of free rent if you just pay a rent through Zently. The first story of today, which I kept seeing multiple articles on, was Voyager 1 just fired its thrusters for the first time in 37 years, and they worked perfectly. NASA scientists needed to reorient the spacecraft so the antenna would point towards Earth, but the attitude control adjusters, which was their go-to, had been wearing out. So they used four trajectory correction maneuver thrusters, which hadn't been used since 1980, but they worked. It took 19 hours and 35 minutes for NASA to get the results due to how far the spacecraft is, though. Now, this is a very impressive piece of technology for multiple reasons. For those who don't know, Voyager 1 was launched into space in 1977 and is now way past Pluto and outside our solar system studying deep space. It's currently the furthest human-made object from Earth at a distance of 13.1 billion miles, which makes it even more impressive how it communicates with us every day. If you scaled Earth down to the size of a basketball, then Mars would be about 0.65 miles away, Jupiter would be just under 7 miles away, Pluto would be about 90 miles away, and Voyager 1 would be 248 miles away. Plus, this technology was made before 1977, so when this technology was being built, this would be considered futuristic technology. The next story is about an artificial intelligence system that can diagnose depression from someone's Instagram photos. The machine learning algorithm was able to detect clinical depression in people with 70% accuracy. This algorithm looked for things like color and shading in images because data showed that people with depression tend to use more black and white filters than others. Currently, doctors look into a lot of medical records to get assessments of patients. However, in the future, they think patients might opt in to share their social media pages with health professionals in order to help diagnose any problems. So the good news about this is that it's going to be used to help people in the future, whereas so many of the other AI systems developed on social media sites are used to figure out the right ads to show people in their feed. Then in the field of civil engineering, researchers at the University of British Columbia have created an earthquake-resistant concrete that keeps walls from falling. This is known as Eco-Friendly Ductile Cementitious Composite, or EDCC for short. Now the thing is, this is actually a spray that goes onto already existing walls, and it contains polymer-based fibers that make the concrete much more ductile. Meaning, instead of fracturing from an earthquake, the concrete will bend, allowing it to take much more stress. Engineers are always looking for ways to make buildings and materials that can stand up against earthquakes. But what about all the buildings that have already been made? This is where this research will come in handy. They tested the material on concrete and subjected it to a 9.0 magnitude earthquake, the same as the one that hit Japan in 2011, and the walls held themselves up, whereas the ones without the reinforcement collapsed. Moving on, just about a week ago, the Disrupt Berlin 2017 hackathon took place. And this is where hundreds of designers, engineers, programmers, and more come to make some software project. But the thing is, they only have 24 hours to do it. Some people pull an all-nighter while others sleep on the floor. At the end of the 24 hours, they present their project in a one-minute presentation to a panel of judges. And by the way, these events are for people of all levels of experience, so even if you aren't an experienced programmer, you can still attend these, network, and learn a lot. The winner this year was Quick Insurance, which was an app that allows you to purchase insurance for your valuables for a short amount of time. Rather than buying car insurance for the year, the presenter explains that you can use the app to take a picture of your nice camera, for example, that you'll take on your skiing trip for the weekend. You take the picture to show its condition, and you can purchase insurance to cover it in the event that it gets damaged. Second place was Billboard AR, which allows you to point your phone at a billboard and it automatically allows you to buy the product online or point it to the nearest store where you can buy it in person. Hackathons take place all over the world throughout the year, and if computer science, software engineering, or just programming interests you, this is definitely something to look into. Also when it comes to awards, recently the world's richest science prize was awarded, known as the Breakthrough Prize. This actually isn't exactly in engineering, but it's still interesting. The Breakthrough Prize is a cumulative total of 22 million given to several people in the fields of physics, life sciences, and mathematics, and the most recent award show was hosted by Morgan Freeman. In the physics category, $3 million was split among a team of 27 members. These astrophysicists built and launched the WMAP Space Telescope, which at around 1 million miles from Earth, helped map the first light of the universe and played a key role in establishing the current standard model of cosmology. The telescope was launched in 2001 and was actually shut off in 2010, but was very successful in what it needed to do in constructing a picture detailing how the universe evolved. 
In life sciences, five people were each awarded $3 million for a variety of things like therapies for diseases of the brain and nervous system to discovering quality control mechanisms that support healthy function of a cell. And more can be found on this in the link below. And lastly, in mathematics, two people split $3 million for contributions to birational algebraic geometry. In a drawing class, you learn how images in three dimensions can be projected onto two dimensions, like how railroad tracks that are parallel to each other you draw approaching each other and they appear to converge at something called a vanishing point, giving the illusion of three dimensions. These mathematicians found ways to project objects in higher dimensions, like over a thousand dimensions, onto lower dimensional surfaces. Currently, this proof has no direct practical application, as is often the case with pure math. The applications can come up years to centuries in the future. And what they think is that this will be used to help us understand extra dimensions in our universe in the future. For example, there's a theory that says there should be a sixth dimension to our universe, which we can't really imagine. What would shapes look like in higher dimensions and how would we perceive them? Well, maybe using this proof, they'll be able to project the shapes in that higher dimension onto a two-dimensional surface and at least grasp the idea of their shapes, just like a railroad on paper. Again, more info on the winners of the Breakthrough Prize can be found at the links below, and you can even watch the full event on the National Geographic YouTube channel. And before I end this video, I just want to thank our sponsor Zently. Zently is a completely free app which makes the rental process much easier. You can easily split bills with roommates and keep track of who owes who money, automatically pay your rent every month, it helps save you money by scanning your bills and finding cheaper alternatives, plus you can easily send fix-it requests to your landlord to speed up that process. This app is currently only available in the US and links are all in the description below if you want to save yourself a lot of time and hassle. Otherwise, if you liked the video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.